Hello, I'm Joe Dillette. We're going to be carving a love spoon. Love spoons date back to the 17th century, back into uh, the region of Wales uh, and around Ireland. Well, love spoons were given to a girl with the intention of dating the girl. And uh, so Typically, you put on symbols of love, uh, and they're not really used as spoons. They're just kind of a symbol, so that's what we're going to be making. Traditionally, they were made out of lime wood. Lime wood in this country is called basswood, and that's what we're carving here. So this will be the bowl of the spoon up here, and then this will be the handle. After transferring the pattern, I'm drilling out these uh, the sections in the center so I can saw that out first. I'm going to saw that out first because I will still have the strength of the uh, pieces around it. With a coping saw, you can cut the pattern out. You can also use a scroll saw in the inside and a band saw around the outside. We're going to put a floor in the vise there. This is just a board to keep it uh, holding at a certain level. Now clamp it between the jaws. So we're going to be do, using two tools uh, to finish this. One is a gouge. It's a number six sweep. That's the curve in it. And then I'm going to be using a knife. And so uh, the first thing I will do is I will scoop out the bowl of the spoon. So I just come down from this direction, then I come from this direction. And then I come across right at the deepest part to get the chips out of there. It's kind of like the stop cut. I just have to be mindful of how deep I go because I don't want to get the bottom too thin or break out of the bottom. In the United States this wood is called basswood. England it is called lime wood. And in Germany it's called linden. It's basically all the, spe the same species. There might be a little variation, but not much. It's a soft white wood. Very nice, close grain, carves very nice. Now I'm just trying to get the tool marks out. I'm about to the depth that I want to be. A little bit of sanding will get the bottom of that bowl nice and smooth, removing all the tool marks. So I'm just making stop cuts right here by the leaf. I want to get the stem lower 
than the leaves, so the leaves are on top. So by doing the stop cut first, I don't have to worry about splitting that off. I just come right down, right to there. Using really two basic cuts. One I'm pushing with my thumb as I'm pulling back with this hand. And the other one as I hold a knife in the hand like this. And it's safe because I, that's as far as I can close my hand. So then I pinch the piece right up against my hand that holds it. And then I just work the knife back and forth like that. It gives me a lot of strength and a lot of control at the same time. So once I get the top planes determined, then I can go start thinning out the back of it. So this vine then will be thinned out from the bottom. All of it will. So we're going from the bottom up towards the top here. So the roughing out goes pretty quick. I'm careful not to get this too thin. I'm working it down gradually. The thicker I can get this section, the more freedom I have with uh, this leaf to make this leaf do different things. So uh, I will probably get the center of that leaf down deep like this. Maybe scoop out the one side. Make one side concave, then one side convexed. This will be the convex side. This will be the concave side on this side. Now to start roughing out the back so I can match the bowl. This technique works nice to come down on that end grain. Don't want to get that wall too thin. The grain is running in this direction, the long direction. So the weakest spot is where the grain is short, right up here at the top. And I am trying to keep that thicker so there's more strength and not make it look like it is really, uh, you know, it, uh, like it's out of proportion. 
want to still make it look like it's part of the design. This will not be used as a spoon, but still we need to make it so it's sturdy enough where people can handle it. And if it gets dropped, it won't get broken. So we've got a little bit of time in whittling, and we can continue to work on getting uh, the knife marks down a little bit smoother, or we can just go right directly to sandpaper. Uh, many people don't like to sand. They like to keep the tool marks in there, and that is fine. That's one style. The tool marks do add a nice... Uh, interesting bit to the design. It also just tells that this is really hand carved and it shows the skill of the carver if it's done well. Sanding, you get rid of all the tool marks and just smooth it off. So for this spoon I am going to sand it uh, smooth and so I am uh, using a coarse sandpaper. After I finished with the coarse sandpaper, then I'm going with a finer sandpaper. This is a 150 uh, grit. I'm going to use a clear varnish on it, keep the nice light color. If you're doing utilitarian spoons that are going to be used, uh, what I would do is use a salad bowl finish on the spoons. There, I think it's ready for a coat of finish. If you need a pattern for this spoon, you can just use your computer monitor and tracing paper. You stop the video and when the picture is up like this, and then just put the tracing paper right over the screen. You can adjust it to the size that you want, and then just using your tracing paper, your pencil, and just take and trace the pattern.